Hey guys, so if you're looking for the perfect gaming phone, please, for the love of God, listen to what I have to say. Do not buy the Asus ROG Phone 5 unless you watch this video. I wanted to start this video by telling you all a quick story of my terrible experiences with the company. So I've had a couple of different Asus ROG phones in the past. I got the original Asus ROG phone, this one right here, back in 2018. It worked great for six months, and then it randomly died. The display just shut off, I never dropped it, I never put it in water, nothing at all, it just died. So I thought, okay, that's maybe a fluke, it's just a one-time thing. I went back to using my Razer phone, which was a year older, <laughs> believe it or not, and this thing still works to this day, like four years later. And then when the Asus ROG Phone 3 came out, not too long ago, I decided to buy that phone as well. It worked great for six months, and just like what happened with this phone, it died the same exact way. I never dropped it, I never put it in water, it just randomly shut off, and that was it. Back in early February, I sent the Asus ROG Phone 3 to the company. I sent it like around February 1st. It said it arrived around February 7th, February 8th, something like that. And since then, I've not gotten a proper update. I've called the company about 10 different times. I've asked, hey, what's the status of my phone? Some people have said that it arrived. Other people said that it's in the warehouse and they're waiting to repair it. Other people are saying that it's already repaired and they've shipped it back. I'm not getting a clear answer and I don't even know if I'm ever gonna get my phone back. So I spent $1,000 on a phone that broke after six months. I sent it to the company to repair it I had to pay $80 just for them to look at it, and then they lose it, and I never get my phone back. Does that sound like a very high quality phone? I wouldn't say so. So I made a video not too long ago where I talked about the Asus ROG Phone 5 killer, and I talked about this phone right here, the Nubia Red Magic 6. And the company reached out to me and said, hey, would you like to review this phone? And I was like, sure, why not? I have basically like every other Nubia phone that has existed in the past, so when the company asked if I wanted to review another one, their latest edition, I thought, why not? That would be pretty cool. So they sent me this phone, and in today's video, I want to explain why you should get this phone and not the new Asus phone. I hope you enjoy. If you do, make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below for more tech reviews like this. Please, if you're willing to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars to get a new gaming phone, watch this entire video so you can see why something like this, that's like five, six hundred bucks, is way more worth it than spending thousands and thousands of dollars for an Asus phone that's probably gonna break after about six months of use. So without further ado, let's get into the unboxing experience. So when you're presented with this phone for the very first time, you're gonna have the cool looking box right there, as well as a second box that you can get if you want. When you open up the big phone box, you're gonna be presented with the phone. It looks absolutely fantastic when you turn it around for the very first time. I mean, seriously, there are no phones that look quite like this. It's just awesome. And then when you remove that plastic divider, you're gonna be presented with some other boxes as well. One of the boxes is a charging brick, a massive charging brick, which we're going to have more information about later, as well as the signature red cable that comes with Nubia phones. I love the red cable. It's bright. You can't miss it. It's fantastic. But then as well, you're, of course, going to have some paperwork. You're going to have a warranty card as well as some information about the phone and then a SIM tool. So that's all the basic stuff that you would expect when you're getting one of these phones. But then you can also have a secondary box with something else. And this other thing is called the dual core cooler. You can see it right here. This thing is pretty big compared to the phone. And this thing is something that you can actually put on top of the phone to cool it down even more. Now listen up. Nubia phones, if you remember, are the phones that have a built-in internal fan. So this thing already has a fan inside it, and that means it cools down way better than an Asus phone, way better than any other gaming phone, okay? Lenovo Legion Pro, pff, get out of here, all right? Asus ROG Phone 5, no, not a chance. This thing cools down better than any other gaming phone, okay? And then on top of that, you can put this dual core cooler and cool it down even more. I mean, if that's not the craziest thing ever, I don't know what is. I've already tested this thing out a lot when gaming, and this is, without a doubt, the coolest phone you're ever gonna have when you're actually gaming on the phone. Next up, though, let's talk about that display. Oh my god, this is such a nice-looking display. Look at how smooth it is. Seriously, there's not really any other phone out there with a better display. 
And that's not just me just saying it's really cool. Like, it legitimately is the best and the smoothest display on any smartphone ever. It's a 165 hertz refresh rate, okay? To put it in comparison, I have an iPhone, all right? I have the iPhone 12 Pro Max right here. This thing has a 60 hertz refresh rate. And when I compare the two different phones and how smooth their displays are, it's like night and day. Whenever I show this phone to somebody who has an iPhone, they're like, what? How does that even work? How is it so smooth? I mean, the differences are massive, okay? This is even faster than the other Nubia phones, like the Nubia Red Magic 5S that has a 144 hertz refresh rate. Now, is 165 hertz very practical yet? Obviously not. But eventually, once games get developed to the point where they can run 165 hertz, when you're going up against somebody that has a 60 hertz display and you have 165 hertz, you're going to have a massive advantage over them. So if you're looking in the long run, 165 hertz is the way to go. I should say it's a 6.8 inch full HD AMOLED display with up to a 500 hertz touch sampling rates. And yeah, this thing has a bit of a bezel on the top and the bottom. But then again, when you're using gaming phones, you don't necessarily want this thing to have like a waterfall display around the edges of the phone. That means your palm, some other things when you're holding your phone, they might end up accidentally pressing buttons that you don't want. So when you have a bit of a bezel on the left and the right on an already big phone, that's actually going to work out better in the long run for you. Now you may be asking, well, hey, wouldn't 165 hertz massively decrease the battery very fast? And yes, it does, but they have something that can actually prevent that from happening. It's an adaptive refresh rate that you've seen on some other phones in the past. That means if you're gaming, you might have 165 hertz refresh rate when you're actively gaming and playing a game like Call of Duty Mobile. But then, if you get a phone call and you switch over to just a phone screen or WhatsApp messages, it might cut down to 30 refresh rates, okay? It's going to adapt based off of what task you're performing on your phone so you can extend that battery life a lot longer than you would normally. Continuing on with the display, when you touch the screen, it's going to have an 8 millisecond delay, okay? That is extremely fast. That is going to be just as good as some of your top-of-the-line wireless mice that you use when you connect with your computer. And speaking about the display, this phone has an in-display fingerprint reader. It's positioned in a very good spot, and it works pretty good, okay? There are a couple of phones that might have a better in-display fingerprint reader, but in general, as long as you don't have a ton of stuff all over your thumb, for example, it's going to work fine, and I, I, I don't find any issues with it. And now let's talk about that internal cooling fan. Yes, you heard me right. As I said in the introduction to this video, this phone literally cools down better than any other gaming phone I have ever tested in the past. And that includes some of the last edition Nubia Red Magic phones. It is insane how good of a job it actually does. And it does it on a phone that's, you know about the same size as an iPhone. So I mean, you know, if this if this company can do it, you would figure iPhone and other companies could do it as well. But I might as well show you guys what it sounds like in case you think I'm lying. Yes, as you can see, I'm not lying, and you can actually see a visible difference in the change in power that you can put on that fan. You can put it up to turbo mode if you want to, or you can cut it down if you're only doing a small amount of tasks that's not going to heat up the phone too much. So you can actually change between how powerful you want your fan, and I think that's absolutely awesome. And then on top of all of this, you have the dual core eye stock, which you can see right here. Now this is something that is sold separately, and for some people, this is probably not even necessary <laughs> because the phone cools down so well already. But, you know, maybe you live in a place like India or Florida, like I live, right? Or Vietnam or Singapore, any country that is very hot for a big portion of the year and you're outside a lot gaming, then, you know, maybe this is something that you want to attach on the back of your phone just so you can have that extra level of cool. And uh, whereas your friend's phones are going to overheat and they have to, like, stick it in the refrigerator or something, um you're not going to have to worry about that because this thing actually cools it down a heck of a lot better than even the internal fan on the phone. 
But let's talk about that performance. This phone's got the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 chipset with the Adreno 660 GPU. Now, there's a lot of phones out there that may say they have some, like, turbocharged 888 chipset or some special things about it. But in all honesty, you know, as long as you have the 888 chipset on a phone, that's all you need, all right? No game is going to struggle with this thing at all, okay? You could download every single game on the Google Play Store for this thing, and you're never going to have an issue with it, okay? So if you're worried about, you know, some phone having some special turbocharged ability on their processor, it, it, it's kind of a gimmick because it's going to do the same thing as this thing, right? Yeah, maybe in five years from now, it might be a bit better to have that. But as I said before, Asus phones break after six months of use anyways, so you're not even going to have the thing that long anyways. This thing doesn't break. I've never had a Nubia phone break, okay, after two, two and a half years of use so far. So, you know, with something like this, I would just stick with this, with the 888 chipset, and you're good. And it's got that LP DDR5 RAM with UFS 3.1 storage. This phone's got a decent amount of storage. It's got up to 256 gigabytes. I would have liked it to have 512, but not really that big of a deal. And the coolest thing about this phone is the fact that it has 16 gigabytes of RAM. I mean, I have a laptop, I can't show it to you guys, but I have a laptop that has 32 gigs of RAM, and it's a full-on gaming laptop, okay? And this thing is half as powerful as an entire gaming laptop, like what? I mean, it's insanely fast, okay? So as I said, you know, you don't need to have anything more than 16 gigs of RAM, that is plenty enough for a gaming phone to run every single operation you could possibly imagine. You could have 100 apps open at the same time and your phone is going to show no signs of slowing down. I've tested it. I've used it for days now and I have had no issues whatsoever. It's the fastest phone that I have ever bought in my entire life. But moving right along, we should talk about the shoulder triggers, shouldn't we? When you're holding your phone like this, you actually have little buttons on the left and the right top of your phone that you can actually press. And these buttons are actually linked to certain areas of your screen. So when you actually turn on game mode, which is pretty cool in and of itself, you switch this little switch right here, and then it gives you this cool little animation, puts you into gaming mode on your phone where you can actually add and remove games that you would like on this. This is where you can actually customize the little lights that's going to be on the back of your phone. This is where you can customize how much power you want your fan to have and some other stuff like that, like turning off all notifications, for example. You can actually customize these shoulder triggers. So say, for example, I have Call of Duty Mobile open right now. If I would like to have my left shoulder trigger to be aiming and my right shoulder trigger to be firing, well, I'm putting the buttons exactly like you're seeing on the screen right here. And then when I actually press the shoulder triggers, it's going to press those buttons on my screen. So it essentially turns my phone more so into a controller than a phone. It's really freaking cool. I've never really gotten into it in all of the different Nubia phones that I've had. You know, I've, I've had quite a few now that have this shoulder trigger thing. It's never really been a thing for me because I don't even have a console myself, but for somebody that plays a lot on an Xbox or a PlayStation, this might be something that you're more comfortable with, and I could see a lot of people getting great use out of this. Did I say 400 hertz touch sampling rates? That means this thing is gonna get down to 8.3 milliseconds. It is literally as fast to press those buttons on the top of your phone as it would to press the buttons on your screen. And I think that's absolutely insane. I wanted to show you guys an image that the company provided when they sent me this phone. Um, this is a comparison between two different phones, the Red Magic 6 and the Xiaomi Mi 11 when you're using a game like Genshin Impact. That's a game that is apparently extremely popular. I've never actually played it myself, but you can see that it is much more stable using the Red Magic 6. This is the Red Magic 6 Pro. So getting even the lower end model of this phone, it's going to perform better than something like the Xiaomi Mi 11. It's got 5G, which is something you can expect at this point in time. So if you're living in a place that 5G is offered, you can use it. Great, fantastic. And to talk about GameSpace 3.01, I mean, you guys are seeing here that there is just so much stuff to talk about. You can turbo drive your phone if you want to, turn on super performance. 
you can turn on gyroscope directly from the phone itself you can see tons of different stats about your phone you can actually have built-in buttons for things like facebook whatsapp discord you can directly control your shoulder triggers. And there's so many different buttons, dude. Like, I could spend an hour talking about all the different stuff that this phone has. It's absolutely insane. And I just want to say, this phone actually records built-in internal audio. And this phone is really designated for people that want to do Twitch live streams or YouTube. Like, I'm going to use this thing to make my YouTube videos from now on. Because the mic is actually, like, right there on the side of the phone. So when you're holding it, your hand isn't blocking the microphone, okay? That's one great thing. The other thing is it records the built-in internal game audio. So that means, you know, if you've ever clicked on a YouTube video where there's some nine-year-old kid talking and you just hear the sound of like, like a pillow rubbing up against the microphone and it sounds absolutely terrible, right? You're not gonna have that issue, okay? So you can sit there, you can record, you can have the game sounds and your voice, and it's going to sound a thousand times better than pretty much any other gaming phone because, well, their microphones are there. Their microphones are not on this part of your screen. So that's always really, really nice. And did I mention this phone has a built-in headphone jack? Yes. My iPhone doesn't have a headphone jack. I don't even know if I have any other gaming phone. Do I have a phone that has a headphone jack? No. This is another phone that I just recently bought. This doesn't have a headphone jack, okay? This is one of the few phones that does. So if you have headphones that you need to plug in, you're in luck. This phone can actually run them. And now we can talk about the battery. Now this phone does not necessarily have as good of a battery as something like the Asus ROG Phone 5, but I would sacrifice some of that battery if I know my phone is a better quality. That's actually gonna last longer than six months, okay? This phone has a 5,050 milliamp hour battery. It is the largest battery out of any Red Magic phone, so that's something you can actually guarantee with this thing. It's going to perform better than the batteries of any other Red Magic phone, so that's always a plus. And it has a 30 watt charger when you actually get this phone shipped to you. This is a 30 watt quick charger. It can support up to 66 watt, so if you happen to have a faster charger lying around, you can use it, but most people are gonna be using that 30 watt charger and it can go from zero to 100% in about an hour of charging. So not terrible, but it can go down to about 35 to 40 minutes if you use the 66 watt charger. As I said, most people are gonna probably have 30. So, so expect you can set this thing down after an hour, you can use it once again. And now let's talk about the cameras. As you can see, this phone has three different cameras on the back. The main camera is 64 megapixels, which is pretty good. It has an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera and a 2 megapixel macro camera. Now, I have to say, Red Magic phones are not necessarily known for their camera. That's the one thing that's a bit of a downside, but it still works really, really good, okay? As long as you're in decent lighting, you're gonna have no issues capturing what you wanna get on your photo, okay? If you're gonna have low light photos, that's really where things are gonna struggle. The low light is not necessarily that great. And if you need to do ultra wide, Eh, it's just okay. It's not the best in the entire world. The one thing that's actually really good is the macro camera. I'm actually very impressed with how close up it can get photos of tiny little things. I mean, that's it's really impressive how good that macro camera is. Talking about the front camera, it's an 8 megapixel front camera. It's pretty good. It's not the best in the entire world. But then again, the entire video that you've been seeing right now has been recorded on a Nubia phone. Yes, I'm not even joking. This entire video has been recorded on the Nubia Z20, which is another Nubia phone. So if you think the video quality has been okay so far in this video, I don't think you're gonna have an issue when you're actually using it yourself. It's a rainy, dreary day here in Florida, and this is a test of the back camera. Um, this is the type of lighting, honestly, where this is gonna shine. If it gets extremely bright outside, um, you might end up running into some issues if you're trying to record like a person standing right here. The background will get pretty overexposed, but you know, as you can see right here, colors are pretty good. It's relatively stable and uh, nothing is too overexposed on a pretty average, somewhat gloomy day. Next up, it's a very windy day here in Florida today. We're actually going to have a tornado warning in a few hours this evening. One thing that I wanted to test 
was how well the microphone picked up my voice when I'm talking right now when it's windy outside. You probably can hear the wind in the background, but with it being, you know, 20, 25 mile an hour wind, this is this is just the wind pushing this, by the way. Um, if you can hear my voice, that means it's doing a pretty good job. That means if you're in a busy city, if you're in any other type of loud environment, and you're recording a video like this, it's not gonna have any difficulty picking up your voice. Another thing I'd like to test out is video stabilization, and I'm driving here on the road, and it's normally a pretty bumpy road, but uh, I, I really don't see any issues with this type of footage. I think it's very stable, it gets the job done, and in most circumstances, you're not gonna have any issues when you're recording in a more active environment. And with all that being said, after all of this has been concluded, I think you're looking at a very, very solid gaming phone. It's a gaming phone. You know, it's not a camera phone. As I saved that at the end, that's that's the one downside of this phone. And then the other the other one downside that I do have to say when I use this thing is uh, it's got a very soft screen protector that's automatically installed when you get your phone. And you have to be very, very careful. If you sit this in your pocket with like car keys, it's gonna scratch, okay? So just keep that in mind. The screen protector is very, very soft on this phone. So you have to be very, very careful with that screen. But other than that, I mean, you're looking at a Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 phone with up to 16 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, 165 hertz refresh rate display with shoulder triggers, a headphone jack, the fastest freaking display imaginable, and every other thing is just, it's just awesome. It's just really cool. And you don't really need any of those other extra features. That's the Asus ROG Phone 5 has. They may say they have some better features on the phone, but the fact of the matter is the phone is going to die probably after about six months of use. Like, just watch six months from now, you're going to see some videos popping up on your home screen from people saying, man, my, my Asus phone broke. What am I supposed to do? And you're not going to see that with something like a Nubia phone because I've had every single Nubia phone since the very beginning, and this phone still works just fine. So, you know, Nubia phones clearly are the better, higher quality winner for that. And I think you're going to have a great time if you buy the Nubia Red Magic 6 or the Red Magic 6 Pro. If you're interested in this Nubia Red Magic 6 or 6 Pro, you can get it right now. Pre-order it. Um, the links are down below in the description. As I said, make sure to click that link and use my link to do that because it's going to help me out a lot. And um, yeah. Don't go with the overrated Asus ROG Phone 5. That's the main message of this video. Try out the Nubia Red Magic 6 because this is what I use for all of my videos. And I think you're going to be very, very happy with this thing. So, yeah. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned a lot today. And I will see you all later.